is like the holy grail of automotive carpet. It's Trinidad. Unfortunately, it's not gold Trinidad, but it's black. And I kind of hoard this shit because it's so desirable and get a phone call at least every other month about it. But this car will be Liberace obnoxious inside. So it should be something to look at in the next two months or so, but we'll see how that goes. Where'd you find that? I found that in a warehouse. I can't remember where now, but I kept buying it. And then I had some for a customer and then a customer decided he wanted to go another direction said, you want to buy all this Trinidad I have? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I want all of it. So to add to my hoarding stash. What would somebody offer you? I've got offered a lot of money for it. Wow. But I'm not selling any of it because it's like my children and I'm too attached to it. This and old cloth, 50s to 70s cloth. I sit here and hoard all the time and don't want to unload any of it. And people think I'm out of my mind for it. <laughs> My name is Bobby Moore. My business name is Evolution Creatives. I've been doing this about eight years now. Since I got back from Oklahoma and I freelanced a couple years and been in here, I've probably been here seven years now in this building. I moved to Oklahoma City after a car wreck and worked at Hicks Design and Kyle Hicks taught me how to do this. I was there probably a year and a half. I lived in Oklahoma City and we did a lot of leather work, a lot of oddball stuff, which was kind of the most beneficial was what you learned that the most valuable thing I probably learned there was not to be afraid to try things and not to be afraid to throw things in the trash. I got into a car wreck and I didn't walk for two years. I was a Land Rover mechanic prior and then I got the, I don't want to be too callous but you're not gonna be doing this anymore. Broke everything from my hip down, hip through my femur, femur in four pieces. It's all pinned together like an erector set now. But walking most days is pretty good and it's still there. It looks like Frankenstein's leg, but it's attached, so that's a plus. So yeah, this, most guys do this till they're in their 80s. And then a couple guys I knew did this and said physically it was a lot easier. So I figured I'd give it a try. Never sat behind a sewing machine till I went there. Bought one off Craigslist. Got in my truck, drove to Oklahoma City. I use a lot of old stuff and I hoard a lot of old stuff. Vintage cloth is kind of my major vice probably. I'm kind of a nerd about it. Like they made a Detroit sample book every year for dealer samples. I have them to 39 till 2020 to make sure that I find stuff I want or what they go for. Um, the vinyls and stuff, they make a lot of that looks like the original stuff, but I don't do a ton of restoration work, but it's nice, that stuff, it bums me out that it's like a trend now, because a lot of people do it and stuff that I fucking hate, but it's like, when you do a little touch of it, you don't even need a lot, because it's all 60 year old remnants, a little bit goes a long way as to something just a little different. The plaid thing kind of took over now like crazy, you can't go to anywhere without seeing plaid something, but they still make a lot of that in Europe for Volkswagen still is a big plaid thing for whatever reason. But I also keep old armrests. I have way too much fucking stainless trim because aluminum trim looks like shit and fucking customs and 60s cars. But I have a guy that just calls me when he gets some and then I just tell him a measurement of a door panel and he just has it and just says, this is what I got, sends me pictures of it. And I go to his house full of orange shag carpet, still all his Vietnam pictures up and just search through his stash. I store a lot of it here, but it kind of overwhelmed me at this point. So I had to start taking it home, which luckily I don't have a family or it would be probably a huge issue. A lot of the old, till about 64, like 55 to 64 cars were really fancy. All the cloth was one year. You can't believe they dumped this much money into making stuff. It's glorious. But then once you get to 65, cars can end up being like the horsepower race where interiors are kind of cookie cutter and just not as fancy. But then late seventies, it's like ugly furniture and it's awesome and you don't really see a lot of it. And if you use it different than the, it was intended purposes, it ends up being a real nice custom piece. Some stuff I do, like there's 57, 58, 59 Plymouth Fury cloth. I found a ton of, and I only sell it to guys with Furies because I have a soft spot for forward look cars. Like 55 to 62, they called Mopar the forward look, and it's all like that plane-inspired stuff, and the cars 
are completely obnoxious. There's a picture of the designer hanging in my shop. I love all of them, but there's a few I've sold to guys. Is there some Edsel stuff that I should only sell to Edsel guys, but I like it so much that I use it and all kind of shit. I'm the only person here too long and it's, it's kind of better, kind of not because you get a little overwhelmed and then it goes a little crazy. I mean, ideally, and it's getting harder and harder, it would be nice to find like a kid that likes art and cars, but can comprehend information and pay attention, which I don't know if that's going to happen. Would he be like an apprentice or? Yeah. Like, I mean, there's some people like the van thing got real big now. And I would like to do more vans, but I kind of like the whole punk rock DIY van thing. So people will ask me questions and I was like, yeah, I'll answer that. And I'll just help you with the seats just because I dig people building their own stuff too. I mean, most people come in here, build their own cars. They aren't rich guys. I mean, I don't really make any money, but it's fun for me still. And it, it's, you get a good charge at a scene, a roll of nothing turn into an end product is a sudden completion and it makes you feel good at the end of it. And at some point you can't put a value on that. My typical day is I normally get here about 8, 8.30 and then look for something to listen to, listen to my dad say a bunch of shit, and then start figuring out what I'm doing on said day. I started having to make a list because I'm real, real flighty, so I have to put a checklist together every week now, so Sunday nights I normally do that so I can keep track of what I'm supposed to be doing. But yeah, then by the time you get people coming in here, have to find stuff, have to do that, then you're like, okay, I'm locking the door the rest of the day. Don't come in here and bother me. <laughs> um, it varies on the day. A lot of the time I'll try to pattern a couple seats at once, so that way you just sew all day. And then you just sit there and watch a movie on the iPad and sew the entire day with whatever dumb shit you end up watching for the day. Tool, tools this machine and then my other machine those two are the main ones i have a carpet binder and stuff but i don't really do because most of the style cars i do is vinyl edge bound so those you just do on this um a lot mostly vinyl i don't get a big call for leather here and there i do and it really depends on the people i mean i have a 55 coming in he wanted all leather i have a c10 here that's plaid and leather it just most people can't tell the difference half the time and then when you get pearls and weird color vinyls or weird color materials you kind of lean towards vinyl because of price point especially with guys doing the whole project themselves lockdowns not so much especially with me being the only one here carpet for all everyone has turned into a major issue like i've been able to buy yard loop carpet in a wide roll in a year and a half can you explain what that is it's like a if you look at like 64 Impalas, it's a specific style carpet that they did mostly in the 60s. 40s, you have a cut pile and it looks like 80s fucking minivan carpet and it's horrible. But most of the cars I do, I put loop carpet in. So it kind of looks like that Trinidad I showed you, but no metal flake in it. But they quit selling that by the yard. They would sell you one yard a month, which I don't know what the hell you're supposed to do with a yard a month. So you kind of are searching for carpet all the time now. Now, here the past three, four months, prices have went through the roof on foam and everything. And then getting most stuff has been all right, but except for carpet. Carpet's been a huge issue for everyone. It all, like they have distributors. Like I have one guy that comes here once a month and then they have a place in Pittsburgh, a place near Philly. But then I spent like, they discontinued one vine I was looking for and it took me, Christ, a week and a half to find it. And I found it in a warehouse in Chicago. I found a big roll. But I don't like, I mean, there's normally a couple of upholstery supply places. My favorite project, I did two shoe boxes that I really liked. But I really like when these guys will just bring me seats and then I just do them and they pick at them. I get a lot of people that just pick at the interior a little bit of time. Like, I'm gonna do this now, do this then. But I did, a couple months ago, I did a red 50 Ford, not chopped, lowered, real 60s style custom. I put probably 120 buttons in it, 58 Impala cloth, 56 Mercury welt, which is like red and chrome. I had, I could still get carpet for that one when I did it. There's a couple, there's also a 58 Chevy I did that's all gold glitter vinyl, white with all gold piping. He wanted it to look like 
a 60s California custom. And that, when it went to Good Guys in Charlotte last year, I couldn't believe they picked it for like one of the top 10 or whatever, because normally Good Guys really wants modern stuff and not the really obnoxious 60s stuff I like. So it was nice to see it getting appreciated. But yeah, the more obnoxious the stuff, the more I kind of dig it. And I realize my base of people that like what I do is about this big compared to the new modern street rod stuff. And I just, from an artistic point, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand it. I've done a few raised panel stuff and have to call my buddy Ricky in Alabama and ask, does this look right? Is this what it's supposed to be? And then he has to walk me through it like I'm stupid the whole time I'm making stuff. Anything modern, I don't understand. If I wanted to drive a new Nissan, I would drive a new Nissan. I mean, that stuff, all the new stuff, when you look... Yeah, there's some stuff I've sent to other guys because they do that style. I mean, at the end of the day, and I know most people don't look at it like this, this is an artistic process. And most people can't do every kind of style. There's a few guys that do it, and I'm, like, amazed by it. Like, when you can do everything... I don't, I don't understand it because I don't get a lot of it and I just don't understand it. But like real swoopy street rods really in for me and I just have fumble through it if I ever have to do it. And then that the real modern style cars, like what do they call it? Like the pro touring style. I like to look at it because I appreciate the work and the craftsmanship that went into it. But I mean, I know people want these resto mods with like it feels like driving a modern car, but you're in an old car just so it feels like that. But like it kind of takes some of the charm out of having an old car. I mean, that's part of the thing, how quirky it is, noisy it is. But there's a lot to be said for reliability and like comfort of driving and all that stuff. I mean, Christ, I have a 56 Dodge that I didn't even put a dual master cylinder on it because it was untouched since 56. I didn't want to mess with it. Dream project is probably, for me, would be a 61 Imperial. 61 Imperial would probably be my dream project, and I wouldn't do shit to the body. And the interiors and all those cars, like people do custom interiors and 55 to 62 Mopar stuff, but the original interiors were so wild on them. They would have pearl vinyl, two different colors, cloth, heat pressing, different size welts, chrome welt, every custom top stitch you could imagine on one seat. And every time I see people do them, I'm like, why would you fuck with it? It was perfection when it came out of the factory. Like, and I don't ever say that about stuff, but like you look at it, you couldn't do it more custom than how custom it was factory. Chris, I did a 61 Imperial wagon. It looks like what guys do for new custom seat patterns, stock. And it, I mean, the stock stuff is a pain in the ass to do because you have to find all the pictures of it. But when you see them right and they're in the right car, it's so good. And Chrysler was kind of the king of it. I mean, Ford did some wild stuff in the late 60s. GM did a little bit, but most of the patterns are still pretty good. 62, 63, 64 Impala is still a glorious looking interior with all the chrome buttons and everything. But once you get past that, it's like, ugh, okay, we're here. I mean, I don't really have goals. I want to keep hoarding cloth like a bastard, and I'm probably going to empty three shops out this year. Um... I don't know. I, I like that people dig what I do. It makes me happy. And that's kind of what I care about. I would like to have somebody come in here and show them how to do some of it. But like I said, the circle of people that like this is so small that I don't know how it would go. But I like that people that I did stuff for come back just to like hang out, even when they drive an hour and a half here, just to go to lunch or something. Like that makes me feel good that they have a good feeling about dealing with me. I mean, at the end of the day, I want to feel good about what I do. And that's all that really matters to me. That and hoarding cloth. Those are the two things that matter to me. <laughs> I thought about moving to Texas briefly. But, man, the Northeast route is so fun and so nice. It's great. And then, like, as stupid as it sounds, Sheets, Wawa, and Rofo is a son of a bitch. It's hard. like, you go down there and they get, Bucky's has punch screen computers. I'm like, welcome to civilization. We've had this for 15 years. Like, this is how, it's hard, it's just hard to leave, want to leave here. And everything's so close. I mean, Philly's two hours away. New York's three and a half. Boston's eight if I want to drive there. DC's an hour. Baltimore's 35 minutes. I mean, everything's so convenient. I go places and then I'm like, I could do this. And then I'm there for a little while. I'm like, no, I'm good. If you know old dudes with cloth, tell them to call me. I don't care what time of day it is. I don't care where it is. I'll come get it. And hopefully...
people keep building cool vans by themselves and feel free to message me with any questions just because I like people doing their own stuff. Cool. Thanks, Bob. Mm-hmm.